Okay, here we go. It is 9.30 at night, <laughs> uh, and here I am, still wearing my pajamas, pajama programming. Uh, we are going to do today, Advent of Code, Day 3 Problem. If you don't know, the Advent of Code is an annual programming puzzle competition of sorts. You can make it competitive if you want, but most people don't. You just want to solve all the problems for fun. Uh, you could theoretically solve all these pro problems like by hand or whatever you can, but it's going to be pretty hard without using a computer. Uh, but because it's just take a text file of input and find the correct answer, you can use whatever programming language or tools that you want. I got a friend who did day one in Excel. I have no people using bash scripts, right? I'm using Python. I'm thinking about though, trying to get my old Apple like two computers to solve some of these just for fun, right? So we're gonna do day three today because I didn't have this idea to record and stream myself solving the problem until today, which is day three. Um, and hopefully this will be interesting to you. My goal is to show like the real process of programming or at least my personal process, right? And, you know, show people, you know, it's not like, oh, some genius problem solving thing. It's, you know, I'm going to Google probably to find answers and clever ways to do things and steal them, right? That's uh, I'm not going to just Google for answer to advent of code day three, but I'm going to, you know, come up with a solution and then search for implementations, right? That's, that's how I do things. All right. So uh, let's begin by reading our problem, right? So here we are. All right, day three, toboggan trajectory. With the toboggan login problems resolved, you set off toward the airport. While travel by toboggan might be easy, it's certainly not safe. There's very minimal steering and the area is covered in trees. You will need to see which angles will take you near the fewest trees. Due to the local geology, trees in this area only grow on exact integer coordinates in a grid. You make a map, your puzzle input of the open squares, and trees. Okay, so uh, it's, we're going to get a text file that's going to look something like this. There will be dots and there will be hash marks in it. Um, these aren't the only trees, though. Due to something you read about once involving genetics and the same pattern repeats to the right many times. Ah, so I see it's going to actually be, see, it's the, this line is repeating one, two, three, four, five, six times, and so forth. Okay, you start at the open square in the top left corner. So we can, so they're telling us, this top, the first line, the first thing is always going to be a dot. There's never going to not be a dot here. Um, we're not going to have to do any input validation, right? We can just trust that there's a dot here at uh, zero, zero. Uh, you need to reach the bottom, right? Below the bottom most row. So we have to go. So if you're solving this by hand, we would go do, 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 right? Um, the toboggan can only follow a few specific slopes, right? Start by counting all the trees you would encounter for the slope, right? Three down one. One, two, three down one. One, two, three down. Oh, so we're not just going straight down. Right three down one is two trees. One, two, three down one is two trees. From your starting position at the top left, Check the position that is right three and down one, then check the position that is right three and down one from there, and so on until you go past the bottom of the map. Okay. The locations you check in the above example are marked here with zero where there was an open square and X where there was a tree. Right? Oh, so it's only so right three and down one, no tree. Right three down one, tree. Right three down one, no tree. Right three down one, tree. Okay see how it is. Um, in this example, traversing the map using the slope would cause you to encounter seven trees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. Starting the top left corner of your map and following a slope of right three and down one, how many trees would you encounter? Oh, okay. So uh, going right three and down one. So if you consider that it's, is it always going to be the same width? All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, zero to ten. Okay, is it always ten wide? Let's check our input file. Right, puzzle input. 
our puzzle input is not 10 wide. It is much more than 10 wide. So we don't, we have no guaranteed set width here. Um, okay. Uh, I'll make a slope of right, uh, right three and down one. How many trees would you encounter? So, um, doot, doot. So basically, we're just we can go right three and down one, just normally, right? But look how look how tall this is, right? <laughs> um, and they're repeating sideways. So that means if the row, once you're beyond, right, the start, right, right, there's the total number of horizontal pixels you're at, right? So Right, so you start at the 0x, right? You start at 0, 0. And if you go right 3 and down 1, you're now at 3, 1, right? Then you're at 6, 2. Then you're at 9, 3, uh, 9, 10, 12, 4, and so on. And basically, you don't, all you care about is the second number, the y coordinate, is always going up by 1. So you just want to stop when that number is greater then the number of lines right, in the entire sheet. So if it's a 100-line sheet, you're just looking at that right-hand number, and you're saying it's a 100-line sheet, uh, you start counting at 0. So when the number equals 100, right, equal, so when the number equals the number of lines, then you stop. OK, so then otherwise, you're looking at the x number, right, is how far horizontal you are on that line. So you, you pick that line out of the list of lines, right, and you want to go to the x coordinate, um, right? So in this case, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? Because you, right? Uh, and we're not counting the first one. The first line basically doesn't even matter at all. Um, you're never counting the first line. Oh, I guess this, I wonder if this is never going to be a, yeah, the first line never matters. This is not going to be a, a tree. Um, and you look at that line, and you're going to get the coordinate you're at, but I think you're going to do modulus the width. Let me just verify that that's correct. So modulus is like remainder, right? So obviously, if the... Um, Right, so imagine a 10, a 10 with, let me switch to my um, coding window here. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, okay. So if something is on 3, it's going to be obviously on, on 3. If something is on 6, going to be on 6. If something's on 9, it'll be on 9. If something's on 12, eh, nah, nah. it's going to be here. 12 will be on 2. Um, it's, so what if, what if this was, uh, the width of this was like a 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. OK, so the width is 13, so 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 would be here, 15, 18, 9, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 5, 6, so 27 would be here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 20. Oh no, 27 would be here. 28, 29, 30. All right, so 30. 30 would be here. So how do we get 30 from 13? It's uh, to get the answer. Well, we're trying to get the answer three, right? The answer we want to get is three because that's the the, the coordinate in the in the row we're trying to check, even though we overlapped, right? 
So we want to get a 3. Our x, our x is 30, because this is our third, uh, all right? x is 30, and we want to get a 3. So it's 13. So the width is 13. We're on the second row. And we're on the third, no, we're not. We're well beyond the third row. 30. All right, so what's, let's just do that. See, I find uh, see. So 30 modulus 13 would be 4. I think it is just going to be modulus. 33 modulus 13. Yes, yeah, so we modulus the width, just like I thought, right? 36 modulus 13 would be the 10th row. 39 is 13, 0. All right, so let's just verify this, right? Uh, well, it's going to be thir modulus 13, you know, minus 1, right? Um, or it would be modulus 12, would that be? Yeah. All right, let's verify that that works in every case. So uh, for um, x in, uh, let's see, say our width equals 10, right? Uh, for x in range up to 100, we want to, uh, well, let's do a width that's different from 10. That's not so obvious, right? 17, sure. For x in range 100, we want to print, uh, we want x times 3, right? Because that's, our, that's our, our, our sort of current count, right? Uh, count okay, let's just make sure yeah that's right no oh. oh we didn't need to oh we didn't need to do that see look at how this stuff happens all right it's a current count uh, and then we want to do x mod width Okay, so yeah, so we're going to be going. Oh no, we want. Um... We want x times 3 mod width. Okay. Let's do less, way less than 100 so we can actually see what's going on. Okay, oh, we should also just put x. All right, so in, it's going to start at 0, 0, 0, 1, 3, 3, 2, 6, 6, 3, 9, 9, 4, 12, 12, 15, 15, 15. We've hit 17, right? Well, which was our width, right? Width was 17. We've wrapped around 15, 16, 17, 18, right? 15, 16, 17, wrap around 18. You're now at 1 again, right? Um, and because 17 was actually the start, right? Because you're, you're counting from zero. So we're just modulus the width. X times three is going to tell you which X coordinate to check. Okay, great. All right, so let's get our input file. Terrific. We got it. All right. Python. Um, and then we're going to do OK. okay. We're going to look at our previous solution from the previous day and steal our uh, code, our own code. Oop. Parse input file. <laughs> okay, parse. Cool. OK, 
Okay, parsed lines with open uh, parsed lines equals read dot split lines uh, return We actually don't need debugger yet, if we even need it at all. Okay. Cool. Tree count. Yep. That looks like it worked. And each, we've created a list, a, a Python list. And in that list, each of the lines is one row. So if we, we're going to get the debugger going on here now. Is the debugger installed? It's not. Hold on. Uh, AOC3. Come on, you can do it. All right, I install my Python and my debugger. Cool. Hey, OK. So we can go to like row, row three, right? Row three. Number five, not a tree, right? Cool. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna do four. Um, well, let's do make a function. Uh, uh, count trees. All right. So we're gonna do. Data, right, is the first input. Uh, our horizontal movement is the second, and our vertical is the third. Right, width equals the len, the length of the first row. All the rows are guaranteed to have zero length, right? Start a position equals, uh, we're gonna use a tuple, zero, zero, right, okay. Uh, for a uh, row in data, so we're going to go once per once per row, right? We're going. Oh no, it's not for row in data. It's for um, uh, we need the number of lines. Height equals the length of the entire data, right? So the width is the length of a single row. The height is the right? so for um, no while uh start position so while the right side of the start position is less than or equal to the height we want to um we want uh start uh, we can um let's just do this start uh, x let's just do I should do x and y. <laughs> x and y is 0. OK. Forget the tuple. Uh, well, y is less than the height, right? Um, x plus equals horizontal. y plus equals vertical. So that's one step, right? And we're going to get our tree count starts at 0. x equals 0, x equals 0. OK, and then if tree oh if um if data x no data y x it's backwards right oh but it, it's not data y x it is um it's data y x uh modulus width right if data y x modulus width equals a tree, tree, tree count plus equals one, return tree count, print count trees, oh, result, you all do result equals count trees, data three one. print result. All right, we may have a solution. Let's try it. 
Three count. Failed. List index out of range. All right. Uh, let's see. Index error. Oh no, we did something wrong. Someone's probably seen what we did wrong already. Okay, x, y, y modulus uh, width is 13, okay. Uh, data y, aha, y is 323. Uh, ah, I see we've, we've um, y minus uh, data 322, yeah. So we just we just we went one too far, right? Because um, so we got to change our while loop, right? While 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 y is less than the height, um, go higher, right? Um, well, actually, well, as soon as while y plus vertical is less than or equal to Let's see, what's the height? The height is 323, three. so less than the height. Right. There we go. All right, let's see if we're, we're correct. We got 292. 292 was our answer. Let's go back to the web browser. Come on, web browser. Let's see. OK, answer, 292. That's the right answer. One gold star. Hey, Sweet. OK, one gold star. Continue to part two. All right. Time to check the rest of the slopes. See? See, when you, when you code part one so nicely with all these parameters for your function, right, like I did, horizontal, vertical, right, well, we can check all these other slopes, right? We need to minimize the probability of a sudden or boreal stop after all. Determine the number of trees you would encounter if, for each of the following slopes, you start at the top left and go all the way to the bottom. In the above example, the slopes would find two, seven, three, four, and two trees. Yep. Multiply together. Wait. Determine the number of trees you would encounter if, for each of the following slopes, you start at the top left and go all the way to the bottom. Multiply together the number of trees encountered on each of the listed slopes. OK, so this is going to be really easy with the code we already have here, because we already have count trees, and we can already input our horizontal, our horizontal and vertical slopage. So let's, uh, now that we have our tree counting function is already good from part one. We don't need to mess with it because we have our slope as parameters. We parameterize that. We now just need to loop over the count trees function. So we're going to do count slopes, right? Data slopes. Going to pass it a list of slopes. Okay. Um, the we're going to do total tree. Oh, tree counts, right? Tree counts. Going to store all our separate tree crowns for horizontal and vertical in slopes tree counts. Uh, we'll, we'll call it the append function actually. It's a little cleaner looking, right? We're going to append count trees data horizontal vertical return tree counts. Okay, and now I'm going to see if there's a Python function. I'm going to do some Googling. So back to the web browser, do some Googling. Python, multiply all items in list by each other. Multiply all numbers in the list four different ways. Uh, okay. Oh, here's one. Result, oh, we can, do, we can do result times star. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Oh, dot prod. 
Oh, NumPy. No, we're not going to import NumPy. Uh, reduce from Funk Tools. Oh, reduce with a lambda. Hey, we don't care about that one. Uh, math.prod. Let's try math.prod. All right. Back to, there's the Googling I talked about. No, not webcam. Coding. Cool. All right, let's just test out math.prod over here, right? Import math. Math.prod. Uh, one times two times three should be six. Sweet. Math.prod. Uh, four times uh, four times two should be 16 times two, 32. It's working, great. So we can now call down here. Um, our slopes are gonna be, get that out of there. So the slopes in the, in the example were one, one, three, one, uh, five, one, Seven one and one two. Terrific. Okay, uh, we're gonna count uh, result equals oh tree counts equals count slopes data slopes, and then we're going to print math oh result equals uh, we're gonna import math. Import math. Math.prod tree counts. Print result. So we, oh, fix our code up here. Sweet. All right, let's uh, see if this works. Tree count. Nine, three, four, five, seven, all right, let's go. Let's go back to our web browser. Let's type in that number, see what happens. Here we go. Uh, we'll copy and paste it. That's the right answer. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay. How about that? Day three of Advent of Code solved. Uh, it didn't take that long. I mean, it, it says my timer took a half hour, and at least if we get, we've been recording video for a half hour, but um, I spent some of that time doing some video flubs. I'm gonna edit out for the YouTube and such. Uh, so yeah, I hope that was um, helped illustrate what actual Programming is like for me at least uh, how I think about problems the, the takeaways I want people to realize were that uh, by parameterizing by over parameterizing my solution to problem one I was I was able to solve problem two more easily That's big in advent of code because that's the pattern it usually follows but it's also big in real life programming um Instead of hard coding any kind of variables in, right, to your program, all right, try to parameterize things and you basically take code you're already writing and then it'll become more generally applicable and more useful to other scenarios, you know, even though you might always be calling something with a certain value every single time, one day when that value changes, if your code's ready for it, it's ready for it, right? This thing happens all the time in regular in regular life. And the second takeaway is that, of course, someone who's like me been programming in Python for like many, many years, and I've been programming since kindergarten, and I'm almost 40 years old. Did you see how I had to Google for like, huh, I have all these items in a list, and I want to just multiply them all together. Well, I could have come up with that, you know, solution with the loop, you know, x equals x times result, right? But I knew there's probably a Python function that's clever that does that already. It's not something I've had to do. I haven't memorized it. I Googled, boom, I did, there was the numpy math.prod, but look, it was the numpy.prod, but there was also the math.prod that I found. It worked out beautifully. It saved me a bunch of lines. Um, and we got the right answer. So uh, we will try to do this again tomorrow with less flubbing and less fooling around nonsense. You can go and check out my GitHub uh, to see uh, my solutions.
in there. And you should come and check out the Geek Nights stuff, Geek Nights Discord, Geek Nights Forum. We're talking about Advent to Code in there, you know, among all kinds of other stuff. Uh, listen to my podcast if you really got nothing better to do at such. All right. We'll try this again tomorrow if anybody enjoyed it.